Okay, uh, good day everyone. Uh, welcome to our GTAC Tech Talk webinar on Omnicast in a control room environment. My name is Derek and I am a technical support representative with the Genetech Technical Assistance Center or GTAC. We have other members of the GTAC standing by to answer your questions during the webinar. If you have a question, just type it in the question box of your GoToWebinar console and one of our GTAC representatives will get back to you with an answer shortly. Now, in case there are any questions that we're unable to answer in the time we have available, we'll post the answers on the GTAP form, along with uh, the other questions and answers from the webinar. The question and answers from previous webinars can be found on the GTAC Tech Talk sections of the GTAP forums as well. And the videos of previous webinars uh, can be found in the Tools, Utilities, uh, under the GTAC Tech Talk section. If you have any questions, uh, comments, or suggestions on the GTAC Tech Talk webinar series, we would love to hear them. Uh, those can be posted in the GTAC Tech Talk forum as well, either under the specific webinar title or in the GTAC Tech Talk suggestion thread. Now, just to give you a uh, quick outline on what we'll be covering today, uh, we'll start with a brief outline of the uh, basics of a control room followed by a section on each of the key steps to designing a successful control room. Uh, this will take about 40 minutes and then after that we'll have a brief summary of the key points and go over some frequently asked questions. Uh, and we're going to leave the webinar open for about another 10 minutes after that for questions and uh, that's probably going to take all about uh, 15 minutes. So before going into detail on the configuration of the control room, we should take a look at some of the basics of a control room and what we're trying to achieve. Omnicast is typically used in a security control room environment for surveillance monitoring. Uh, control room is the nerve center of any operation. It facilitates effective and efficient communication and interaction between security personnel and assists with mission critical decisions. The uh, video surveillance system uh, must ensure reliable monitoring and a fast response time in critical situations. Some of the things we can do in Omnicast that will help manage our control room are selecting any live camera for viewing on any monitor, uh, viewing the recorded footage from any camera on any monitor, selecting con and controlling any PTZ camera, and managing live events and alarms in real time. In a control room we can have uh, large screen displays um, to give us a, it's a, to give a centralized point of information and also have uh, audio systems set up for audible alarms or for interaction with mics and speakers such as an intercom. The features that are selected for a control room must provide the operators with an intelligent and intuitive user interface. So in our examples we're looking at a control room with uh, several monitoring stations um, and this may include uh, a video wall as well uh, which can be a bank of monitors or other display method. These stations can be used to control the video wall, view maps, monitor live cameras and alarms, and review uh, archive video. Now before we go any further into the design, let's have a look at the big picture and what we're trying to accomplish. I'm going to go over two possible examples of a control room environment, and then when we start going into the details of each component, we can refer back to our examples. In our first example, uh, it's going to be a simple control room environment where we have three stations, uh, but we do not have a, a central video wall. These are all connected to, to our network along with our cameras, encoders, and other network devices. Uh, the first workstation is being used for monitoring alarms. We would have the live viewer running in full screen mode on both monitors connected to the workstation, but since there are no actions being done uh, by an operator, we wouldn't have any control devices. So on the first monitor we would have our layout containing our arm tiles. Uh, these are used to display live and recorded video footage from any cameras that have an alarm triggered. The uh, second monitor will be running uh, with, uh, with uh, one single tile in the layout and it will be displaying an interactive map to indicate the location of the camera or cameras which are associated with the triggered alarms. Our second station is our PTZ operator station. Uh, this is where control room operators would view and control active cameras. Again, the live viewer would be running in full screen mode on both monitors. Uh, our first monitor is for viewing live video and controlling any PTZ cameras. We have a keyboard and mouse on the workstation. 
Um, and uh, as well, uh, we have a, a CCTV keyboard uh, or a USB joystick as well to uh, aid in PTZ control. Uh, the keyboard and mouse are, are good if we, uh, for saving snapshots or naming bookmarks. Now there's uh, quite a few features that can be used on the station to help in monitoring the system. We can use camera sequences and guard tours to easily view many cameras at a time. We can use instant replay to quickly view an incident or situation, as well as send contextual alarms uh, to alert uh, the other uh, users of the situation. Uh, in order to keep the load on the network and the CPU down, we can use dynamic stream switching, uh, which uh, changes the video stream being used based on the tile size. The operator can use shortcuts and function keys to call up PTZ controls and other commands for greater efficiency. The primary use of the second monitor is to view an interactive map where the operator can locate and select the cameras they wish to view. We can use the live viewer and user configuration to uh, uh, restrict the options available on this station, uh, as well as how the operator logs in. We could have the live viewer set up to automatically log in with a certain set of credentials as well. On our last workstation, uh, in this simple example, we would be uh, using this one to uh, view recorded video. This machine would only be running the archive player, which can be used to search for and export video, review incidents, create bookmarks, or protect video footage. This one would have a uh, mouse and a keyboard as well. Now let's have a look at our large control room environment. In this environment we have four stations and a video wall at the front of the room. We also have a couple of analog monitors uh, being used on either side of the wall. So let's take a quick look at the three major components that can be used to display video that we're using in this example. Now the first are regular monitors, which are used as displays on the workstations. Second are large displays, uh, which are uh, what we would use to uh, display the layouts on our video wall. These can be anything that can connect to a PC, such as a plasma, LCD, LED, or regular television set. Or we can even use a projector to display the layout directly on the wall. We can also use analog monitors connected to a decoder, but considering the limitations of this, we would not want to use this as our primary viewing source or the video wall. Our analog monitors can be used by the supervisor or operators to draw attention to a particular camera. Now, the video wall is being controlled by a series of PCs running the live viewer in full screen video mode, so we have no other panes than the uh, viewing panes on the video wall. The video wall itself is a collection of large displays or monitors that are tiled to form a central viewpoint. This would typically be at the front of the room where all the operator stations could view it. Now in our configuration, the uh, center two monitors will be used to display video from alarms, similar to the first monitor of the first station in our simple example. Uh, we can have any number of possible layouts on the monitors of the video wall to display our cameras. The uh, features we use in those layouts that uh, may be useful are the camera sequences, uh, guard tours, integrated maps, and the dynamic stream switching, which would help balance the load on the system if we're displaying different size tiles in the layouts. Now, uh, one important feature that uh, we can set up on the PCs running the video wall is the abil ability to start the live viewer up uh, with the video wall configuration when the PC is booted up. Now taking a look at the stations in this example, the first one we have is for supervision and wall control. The live viewer is running on both the, both screens on this machine. In our first monitor, the layout is running the remote live viewer plugin. Uh, with this plugin, we can connect to the layout of any one of the monitors and uh, on the video wall and change the contents being displayed, including the layout pattern and the cameras contained in the layout. These changes to the layouts can be saved, so the same configuration is used the next time the live viewer is started. Our second uh, monitor is for the um, is basically being used for the interactive map on our supervisor station. Now our uh, PTZ operators uh, operation stations are using a CCTV keyboard or a USB joystick to control a PTZ camera to track a specific incident in the live viewer. We can have a keyboard and mouse there as well, if necessary. 
Monitoring is typically being done on the video wall, so the uh, guard tour and camera sequences will not be used as much on these stations. Uh, we can use full screen mode or customize the menus and panes available for greater efficiency. As with the PTZ operator station in the simple example, we can customize access to the live viewer options uh, based on the user credentials entered, or we can have the live viewer log in with a set of credentials automatically. Now, our last station in the, uh, is the investigation station, which is used to view recorded video in the archive player. Um, it also has the live viewer running on it for any live investigation that may be required. Now, when looking at uh, the control room design, there are four key steps to help ensure that the environment increases efficiency, safety, operator satisfaction, and helps uh, attract and retain employees. The first step is choosing the applications. We want the right application for the right job. So we need to select the applications we're using uh, depending on what the operators are doing, such as live viewing, video playback, or remote control. The second step is choosing the features of the applications we're going to be using, depending on the equipment and the functions we wish to perform. We would also need to determine which functions will be automated and which will be performed by the operators. Step number three involves organizing the workspace using processes that will improve efficiency based on the design of the control room and the placement of our equipment. The fourth step involves uh, improving the usability of the control room environment. This is basically by adding tools and features that will allow more flexibility in the workflow and workstation configuration. So let's take a deeper look in the first step of the process, choosing the applications to be used by our operators and which uh, stations will be used with which applications. You'll want the control room to be installed with the base Omnicast client applications, the Live Viewer and Archive Player. Some of the workstations will only have one or the other application running. We can define which options and applications the operators have access to by having specific user accounts and defining the privileges for those accounts. Now, as we can see from the diagram, everything is connected to the IP network, so the entire system can be managed from the same control room. I would just like to take a minute to uh, give a quick uh, note on how the Live Viewer benefits us in a control room environment. The Live Viewer can be used at stations to view live video, monitor alarms, uh, use PTZ controls to move cameras, view maps, uh, you add bookmarks to live video, uh, or do instant replays. In terms of the number of cameras we can view, we can display 16 cameras uh, per monitor on as many monitors as the single client PC will support. From the live viewer, we can remotely control other live viewers or decoders. This is useful for controlling client machines that are being used for display only, in case we want to make modifi modifications to what is being currently displayed. For those who are not familiar with the, li uh, the workspace layout of the Live Viewer or the naming conventions used for the parts of the Live Viewer, we have a quick diagram here. Uh, basically, uh, we can customize this layout, including which controls are being displayed in the camera tile and which panes are viewable, with the exception of the uh, menu and viewing pane. Uh, we'll go into more detail about that later on, but uh, for now we just need to familiarize, uh, familiarize ourselves with the uh, Live Viewer panes. The other most common application we'll be using in the control room is the archive player. Uh, this is where we'll be able to search for and view archive video. Some of the things we can do from the archive player are exporting video in G64, AVI, or ASF formats. Uh, we can protect video to prevent it from being deleted automatically. And we can display uh, synchronous playback of multiple video sequences. Within the archive player, we have different search options, which we can use. Um, we can use the video events database for faster and more efficient searches. Now, as with the live viewer, we have a quick view of the archive player workspace, including the names of the panes as indicated. All right, so we're going to take a quick look back at our uh, two examples. And we're going to see basically on the first station, we're running the live viewer. We're running that on both monitors. And we are going to use the live viewer on the second station as well, the PTZ operator station. And uh, on the third station, the only one we're running here is the archive player. This is basically just for uh, reviewing uh, incidents. 
in our large control room example, uh, we're going to be using the live viewer. We're using it on both stations here. Um, that's uh, basically one live viewer running. Uh, just in the first screen, we're using a uh, plug-in here. The uh, PTZ operation stations are both using the live viewer. And in the investigation station, we've got a live viewer just in case we need to look something up. Uh, but our primary um, uh, application here is our archive player. Uh, looking at the video wall, uh, basically all of these will be uh, running the live viewer. Um, this is the uh, the only case where we'll be able to get rid of the, the uh, menu bar is using the uh, full screen video mode. And uh, the live viewer is being run off the uh, computers over here. So now that we've taken a look at the applications, we can move on to step two, which is choosing the features we may want to use in the different areas of the control room. Taking a look at our examples, let's say we want um, the people at the PTZ operator station uh, to be able to view multiple cameras or PTZ presets all in one tile of our layout. In this case, the feature we would use is the camera sequence. This is run by the virtual matrix and can be used to cycle between several camera streams, PTZ presets, uh, patterns, and auxiliaries all from within a single tile or on a decoder. The execution of sequences can be done automatically on a schedule. In the simple control room, this can be done on the live viewer monitor of the PTZ operator station. In our video wall control room example, we can use the camera sequence in one central monitor uh, or in a uh, larger tile to give a, a general view from a, of a set of core cameras. Now taking a look at the live viewing monitor in our second example, uh, we would want to optimize the screen space for actively viewing cameras by modifying the layout. For instance, we can use a layout with one central tile. Uh, we can use this for investigation and control and we have smaller tiles uh, for monitoring other cameras. <coughs> in our large control room example, uh, we'd want to change the tile layout in the video wall to display as many cameras as large as possible. So uh, basically in this case we can use a series of 2x2 two two layouts on each uh, monitor. And this is uh, one half of the video wall on the, uh, let's say on the left side here. Now this is another feature of the live viewer, the tile pattern configuration. There are 22 possible tile patterns that can be chosen, and the selected tile pattern can be saved as a user layout. Uh, it's basically, uh, when you save it, it keeps track of the cameras and the alarm states that are currently defined in the tiles. The layout can be shared uh, among different users, and we can uh, assign that uh, by the, uh, using the administrator account. Um, the assigned layouts are automatically loaded when we're uh, when we're launching the live viewer. The uh, creation and editing of layouts are controlled by the user privileges. Uh, the access to spe specific layouts can be restricted from the user privileges uh, by assigning the layout to a site and then restricting a uh, user access to this site through the permissions. Now let's say we have more cameras than we can uh, effect efficiently fit in one layout and we want to cycle through those layouts to monitor those sets of cameras. In the simple example, this would be done on the PTZ operator station uh, in the uh, live viewer monitor. Uh, and uh, in the large example, it can be done on one or more video wall displays. Operators can cycle through the layouts either by clicking on the layout button on the bottom uh, or by launching the guard tour, which is this button right here. The Omnicast Guard Tour allows us to display more cameras on one PC by cycling through the active layouts at regular intervals. In our simple control room example, when the operator wants to view something specific, they would simply stop the Guard Tour and take control of the camera they would like to control. In the video wall example, specific cameras under investigation or commonly viewed cameras can be assigned to the layouts in the other monitors or viewed from the PTZ operator stations. The dwell time for the guard tour, which is how long it'll spend on each layout, can be changed in the general section of the live viewer options. Uh, midway down the screen we have the guard tour dwell time in seconds. Now in case uh, an operator sees an incident in one of those tiles and would like to review it on the spot, we can use the instant replay feature. This is again something we would be using in the live view monitor of the PTZ operator station in the simple example. 
And in the video wall example, uh, we would not uh, would not be running this on the video wall unless there's something specific that we want the entire uh, room to view. In most cases, our two uh, PTZ operation stations would be uh, using this feature. We can check the instant replay time in the same section as the guard tour dwell time. Uh, this is where we set how long before the current time we want to start viewing the replay and the initial duration of the replayed video. Uh, the instant replay can either be launched from the camera tile or from the tool pane. Now looking at the uh, simple control room example, we are using two monitors for maps. Uh, one for the alarm station and one for the PTZ opera operator station. The map in, on the uh, alarm station would be used to indicate where the alarms are happening on the map and the map on the PTZ operator station would be used to locate cameras for viewing in the live view monitor. In our video wall example, we would be using the map feature on the supervisor and wall control station, uh, but we could also have it on one of the tiles of the monitors of our video wall, um, yeah, just in case uh, we need to, uh, the uh, PTZ operators need to uh, find the physical location for a camera. Maps work with any HTML content, and they are compatible with Windows Live using Bing. Uh, the display content is dynamic, so you can see any state changes in alarms, camera statuses, and other entities. Now, using interactive HTML maps makes it easy for security personnel to locate the cameras they are viewing on a site map. Uh, the uh, camera icons can reflect the actual camera position of any, any camera in the field. If you double click on the camera or um, or drag it into a, a tile, it'll bring that uh, video stream up in the uh, live viewer tile. Now maps can be generated using the map editor and if more complex maps are required, our professional services team can help you out with that. Map generation can be done by third party developers as well, uh, such as a map with uh, real time PTC positioning. Now we'll take a look at alarms. Uh, which are a very commonly used feature in most uh, Omnicast systems. Uh, just to give you an example of, um, of where we would set up the alarm monitors, let's take a look at the setup from our simple control room example. Uh, in monitor 1 we have our alarms uh, with all tiles armed, and monitor 2 has our map indicating where our cameras are located. Now in this case we have two alarms being triggered, uh, and we have it configured to display our live video on the uh, right hand tile and the playback from the time of the uh, alarm is on the left side. Our first alarm is on top, our second alarm is in the middle and we'll note that our monitor has been turned uh, 90 degrees to uh, accommodate more alarm tiles. <coughs> in our video wall example, the two monitors in the middle of the wall are being used for alarms and we have a map on the supervision station that can indicate the location of the alarms. The purpose of alarms are to get the attention of the live viewer user, track the acknowledgement of the alarm, and provide any advanced searching options. We can have multiple cameras simultaneously displayed in the live viewer arm tiles and in the archive player's archive query. Now all stages of an alarm's life are tracked in the alarm database. These can be when the alarm is triggered, forwarded, snoozed, or um, acknowledged. In order for an operator to receive uh, alarms in the live viewer, they need to have at least one arm tile, and uh, they have to be on the alarm's recipient list as well. Now if an alarm is triggered, the live viewer can be brought up in front of other applications, and the guard tour can be stopped. We can set the snooze time and play a default sound on our al alarms as well. We can also send con contextual alarms, which are similar to the predefined alarms, but the alarm recipients and the cameras are defined when we trigger the alarm. So to trigger a contextual alarm, right click on the tile containing the camera, click on trigger alarm, and then in the uh, pop-up box that we get, we can select the recipients and give the alarm uh, a description in the uh, dialog box. Now these types of alarms are useful to report incidents and, and situations to users as they occur. In both our examples, a PC, PTZ operator can trigger a contextual alarm to an operator working, let's say, at the archive uh, player station to review the footage of an incident they spotted on one of the cameras. 
the actual setup and configuration of alarms is uh, really a more in-depth topic, uh, which we may cover in a future webinar. And one last thing to mention uh, on alarms and their usability in a control room is that we can have alarms set up to display the video stream directly to a decoder uh, when they're triggered. In a control room environment, we can have an analog monitor set up separately to display the video stream for the triggered alarms. Um, now, just a quick note on uh, decoders. Uh, they can be used to display um, a video stream on an analog monitor, but there are some restrictions. Uh, most decoders can only output a single stream and do not handle multiple streams. Uh, this means you will only see one camera on each analog monitor. Uh, also, decoders are very manufacturer dependent, meaning an encoder from one manufacturer will not be able to supply video to the decoder from another manufacturer. In a control room environment, you want to limit your use of decoders and rely more on the previously mentioned uh, display methods for your video wall. Now, before we go into detail on the dynamic stream switching feature, uh, I want to take a moment to talk about the effects of the video qual setti quality settings in the live viewer. The video quality settings will affect the overall bandwidth, storage requirements, and usability of the live and recorded video sequences. Omnicast can take advantage of multiple streaming uh, encoders, allowing different video quality settings to be assigned to the archiving. Uh, we can also assign it to remote viewing and recording, and dynamic stream switching tasks in the live viewer. Now each type of video stream has its own pros and cons, and not all cameras and encoders support all video types. For example, the H.264 video streams use very little bandwidth uh, and disk space, but we have a very high CPU usage. Whereas the MJPEG streams have a lower CPU usage, but have a uh, high bandwidth and disk space usage. With that in mind, let's have a look at dynamic stream switching. In our control room examples, we would use this primarily on the live video uh, screen of the PTZ operator station in the simple example. And um, on our uh, live viewers running the video wall, such as below here, in our large control room example. Now, these are the uh, PCs that will be handling the most cameras and will be most affected by the bandwidth and CPU usage of the video streams coming from the cameras or encoders. The principle of dynamic stream switching is that the live viewer will automatically switch the stream that is being viewed depending on the tile size. A, the smallest tile is the low resolution, a medium sized tile will use the live video stream, and a large tile will use the high resolution. So we can see examples of the uh, tile sizes and resolutions here on our uh, three monitors. The high resolution stream will always be used when we uh, when we expand uh, a tile to fit the whole layout, uh, or if we're using the digital zoom. Now there's a few important advantages to using the dynamic stream switching. We can display more cameras on a single workstation since it's less taxing on the PC. Now in order to get the dynamic stream switching to work for the camera you are viewing, You'll need to right click on the camera from a tile in the live viewer and under viewing quality select automatic. Uh, you can also set up the live viewer to use this as the default. From the menu bar click on tools and options and then in the uh, network uh, options on the left we can go under the default viewing stream and set that to automatic. Now in order to set up your streams for the dynamic stream switching, you need to go into the video quality tab under your camera and click on the stream usage button. Now remember this is under the camera entity itself and not under the unit. Now from the uh, stream usage window you can select the use different streams for different usages option and that will present you with a list of all the possible streams you have available for that camera. And from here we can just assign the uh, the uh, different uh, resolutions to the different uh, camera streams. Now let's have a look at the video wall for a minute. All those displays are uh, each running their own uh, layout from a live viewer that is running on a PC. Uh, the PC is being used for the video wall only and as such will typically not have a keyboard or mouse attached. So if we need to change anything in the configuration of these layouts being displayed, it'd be quite a chore to find the PC running the live viewer that is controlling the layout of the monitor that we're looking for, and logging into it and making that modification. So this is where the remote live viewer plugin comes in. 
The purpose of this plugin is to be able to view and control cameras on the live viewer of another workstation. If this feature has been licensed for the system you're setting up, the first thing we'll want to check is to make sure the plugin has been added under the Add in Management section. Under the Live Viewer plugins, we should have a Remote Live Viewer uh, plugin, and we can define how the Remote Live Viewer is viewed um, is uh, viewed in the properties, uh, such as fitting the Remote Live Viewer in a tile, or have it come up in a uh, floating window, such as this one. Once the plugin has been installed, and we can see it in our camera pane, um, you can bring it up by dragging it into a layout, or you can just double click on it. You can then select the live viewer you wish to view in the drop down list, and it will bring up the camera pane from that live viewer. We can only control one live viewer uh, with the remote live viewer at a time. Now, this is a good, inexpensive alternative to a full video wall. Basically, you'll have your bank of monitors connected to a workstation, such as in our video wall example, and when an operator needs to change what is being displayed, they will just need to use the remote live viewer connected uh, to connect to the live viewer layout using the ID and change the cameras being displayed on the tiles. This is a benefit to our control room setup because we can have workstations running in the background without control devices and the contents of the live viewers on those workstations can be changed from any operator workstation that has the plugin installed. Our last feature to uh, look at is a uh, Barco wall. Uh, similar, uh, similar to the way the uh, remote live viewer works, uh, we run the Barco wall plugin and we're able to change the uh, tiles that are being displayed on the Barco video wall. Uh, we can control one or more Barco walls from the same user interface, and the Barco wall is controlled by a Barco controller, which is accessed through an Omnicast plugin. Now, due to the overall cost of the system, this would be something you'd want to use only on very large control rooms or in an environment that had an existing Barco wall installed. Uh, since we can display the live viewer on pretty much any kind of display, a more economical approach to the video wall would be use a, an L LCD TV or a projector or any of the other video display methods we uh, discussed previously. Now on to step three, which is organizing the workspace. Uh, this is a step where we'd be, we would physically set up the placement of monitors, keyboards, joysticks, and other equipment and services in the room. In our control room, before we set up our Omnicast layouts so in the individual monitors, we'll want to make sure they're configured properly in Windows. On the operator workstations with multiple monitors, we want to make sure we have uh, set up which one is on the left and which one is on the right, so the mouse pointer can be moved between screens effectively. For the video wall, if we, uh, if we used to, um, it would be useful to set them up in their proper orientation. Um, although when we're using the Remote Live Viewer plugin, we're connecting directly to the Live Viewer on a particular monitor using the Layout ID. In the Windows Display Properties, we can configure how the screens are set up physically in terms of horizontal and vertical alignment. Uh, these display options will be the same from within all three client applications, including the Config Tool. If we go into the Live Viewer Display Options, uh, we can see the monitors that Omnicast recognizes from uh, the Windows configuration. Now if we take a look under uh, the PC Displays in the Options section, we'll see a checkbox for Enable Video Wall. Uh, this will cause the Live Viewer to save the layouts locally only. Um, it'll enter full screen mode as soon as the Live Viewer is launched, and it will not highlight a tile when it has been selected. Generally, this is a little harder to configure since the layouts are only being saved on this machine and cannot be set up on another workstation. Each individual monitor can be assigned its own viewer layout when in full screen mode, which can be individually configured. You'll see the layout name and ID under the tiles in the monitor. Uh, one quick thing to mention is concerning video cards that do automatic spanning between, uh, between monitors. Uh, in this case, all the monitors are being seen only as one monitor, so in this screen you'd only see one monitor here, and uh, therefore it'll only be seen as one monitor in Omnicast, and, uh, and when we go into live or, uh, full screen mode, we're only going to have one uh, viewer layout assigned to all the, uh, the spanned monitors. Uh, so in a case where we have a 16 tile layout and go into full screen mode using the second monitor, we would only have eight tiles in each monitor. 
Now as previously mentioned, the toolbars and the live viewer tiles can be customized. In our control room examples, this is useful for operators where they can hide the options they use infrequently and have the ones they use all the time right in the toolbar. If the procedures for the control room never call for the PTZ operators taking snapshots or adding bookmarks, um, then we would not need to use those in the toolbar. In our video wall example, we would not to see, need to see any of the uh, options in the toolbars of the live viewers used on the video wall monitors, so we can set all of them to never display. We can go into the tools menu, click on options, and click on the icon for the visual section to bring up the viewing options. Um, in the uh, tile toolbar command sections, we can change uh, which options are shown in which toolbars. Now, um, some of the toolbars for some types of entities, such as cameras and alarms, uh, also have an extended toolbar. Now that will come up when you mouse over the tile toolbar. We can specify which options are shown in the main toolbar, which is the always column here, and which ones come up in the extended toolbar. Related to this, we can modify which menus we want to view in our live viewer, and to a certain extent the archive player. Most of the panes used in the archive player will be used in normal operation, but the live viewer can be more flexible. Uh, from the view menu on the menu bar on top, we can select or deselect which panes we would like to have on screen at the moment. Uh, the only two that we can never hide, except for in uh, full screen video mode, are the menu pane and the uh, this one up here and the viewing pane. We, we can also hit uh, F10 to uh, hide all panes and use other function keys to uh, hide or bring back uh, individual panes. For example, if we have no analog monitors in the system, then uh, we would not need to have that pane active on any workstation. These settings are saved when we exit the live viewer, so we won't have to reset them in our video wall in the event that it has to be restarted. We can also go into full screen and full screen video mode, as I mentioned. Uh, full screen mode, which can be activated by hitting the F11 hotkey, uh, it can be helpful to the PTZ operators in our control room examples. For the alarm station uh, in our simple example or the video wall in our video wall example, we can use the, uh, the uh, full screen uh, video mode as well. Um, to go into, uh, actually for the, uh, for the video wall, and uh, we can use the full screen video mode. Uh, that's the one over here. That's the one where we're missing the, uh, the menu pane on top, and it's just focusing on the uh, viewing pane. Uh, to go into the full screen video mode, we can hold shift and hit F11. Now the last thing to consider when organizing the workspace is your placement of joysticks and CCTV keyboards. Uh, these will be at our PTZ operator stations in both examples. We use CCTV keyboards for PTZ control, camera selection in the tiles, video playback, and we can even do actions like acknowledging alarms and run macros. In terms of connections, we can either have them connect to the serial port of an encoder or decoder, or connected to the serial port of a PC running the live viewer. We can also use a joystick as well, which can be used for PTZ control and other PTZ commands. The buttons on the joystick can be configured to do many functions, such as zoom in and out, start or stop recording, or activate the microphone. The joystick uh, must be discovered in Windows before we can see it in the peripheral section of the live viewer options. Uh, this is where you'd set up your CT CCTV keyboard connected to the serial port as well. Now some of the advantages of using joysticks are they offer smooth and easy PTZ control. Uh, we can use any uh, USB joystick and are very easy to configure. In our examples, our PTZ operator stations would be set up using a CCTV keyboard or USB joystick using either connection method. Now, once we have everything set up, there are a few things we can do to improve the usability of the system. These are things we can set up for the operators, uh, or the operators can do for themselves in order to improve the security and efficiency of the system. The first thing we can do is use the shortcut for the PTZ controls. This is particularly useful in the case where you have your layout set up and would like to work in full screen mode with no panes. The PTZ controls can be detached from the sidebar by clicking on the double window icon in the tool pane. It's right up there. This puts them in floating window mode. From here, you can hide all panes uh, by hitting the F10 key or selecting it from the view menu. 
Now, whenever whenever there's a uh, PTZ we need to control, we can hit the F4 key to bring up the tool pane, uh, control the PTZ, and then hit the F4 or escape to hide the uh, tool pane again. Control P will also bring up the tool pane, but you have to use the escape key with the tool pane selected uh, or hit F4 again to hide it. In terms of other uh, PTZ shortcuts you can use, you can hold the shift key and use the commands in purple on this diagram. The arrow keys can be used to pan and tilt the PTZ, and the slash and asterisk up here can be used to zoom in and out. The uh, speed of, uh, of the uh, PTZ movement can be modified using the plus or minus keys while holding the shift. And there are some other functions that can be accessed using the control key, such as control I to go to the instant replay, um, or you can use control D to uh, activate the digital zoom. Now other functions are accessed directly on the keyboard without having to hold uh, any other key. Some of the common ones are B to add a bookmark, uh, or E to expand or collapse a tile. Now a full list of all these shortcuts can be found in the Omnicast Live Viewer User Guide, and you can find it under the keyboard commands. We can also use the uh, mouse to control the PTZ from within the tile itself. When an operator has a PTZ camera in a tile, and if they have sufficient privileges and the option has been enabled, they will be able to click on the joystick icon in the tile menu. Um, this may be in the expanded menu as well, depending on the live viewer visual options. Uh, after clicking on the joystick icon, the mouse will change into an arrow, which will allow you to move the PTZ in the direction indicated. From the expanded menu in the tile, you can also control the zoom, the focus, and iris of the PTZ camera. Uh, the zoom can be done using the mouse as well, by holding the shift key, and using the wheel to uh, zoom in and out. This is useful for our PTZ operators, as they will not need to have the menu bars on screen at the same time. Uh, they can use the uh, in-tile PTZ controls or use the pop-up tool pane without having to see all the cameras uh, and the toolbar. Now with regards to the way the users log into the system, there are a few ways we can improve usability in terms of security and efficiency. Uh, all client applications can log in using either the IP address or name of the server's gateway. Uh, if an Active Directory server is already managing the Windows accounts, Omnicast can be integrated, integrated with it for authentication, and they will not have to type in their username and password. There's some additional configuration required uh, for the uh, Active Directory integration, and this is a licensable option. Now, as of Omnicast version 4.4, we now have supervised logon as well to connect uh, using a client application when a supervised logon has been enabled. Omnicast requires both the username and password of the user, as well as the username and password of the supervisor. Both, uh, both must be authenticated uh, before the user will be able to log on. Now, one last thing we can do to improve the efficiency and usability of the control room is set up the live viewer to automatically log in, or to launch automatically when Windows starts up. Uh, we can edit the properties of the live viewer shortcut and add switches to uh, tell it which directory to log into, which username and password to use on startup, and other options. If we want to have the system come back up automatically, we would want to check the Windows settings to have it log into a Windows account by default. Um, this would be particularly useful in the event of a reboot or power failure. Uh, if we have the live viewer set up to log on automatically and have it added to the startup menu here, uh, then the video wall can restart as soon as the power comes back up and the PC reloads. This will come up with, uh, of course, all our layouts and uh, camera tiles in the configuration that we saved it. So, uh, before going on to the frequently asked questions, I just want to take a minute to wrap up everything we saw here by looking back at our two control room examples. In the uh, simple control room example, we have a station used to view alarms a station for monitoring and, uh, and operations, and one for checking the archive video. The first station is running the live viewer and only is only being used for observation. The alarms will be displayed on the layout of the first monitor, and the interactive map showing the alarm locations is contained in the layout on the second. Our PTZ operator station is also running the live viewer full screen on both monitors, 
One is being used for live monitoring of cameras and PTZ control, and the second monitor is used for the interactive map. Some of the important features here are uh, camera sequences, guard tours, PTZ control through use of a joystick or CCTV keyboard, uh, and dynamic stream switching. We can also customize the access to the live viewer features uh, and startup. The third station is simply running the archive player for video searches, exporting video clips, or bookmarking and protecting archive video. In our large control room example, we have our workstations being used to uh, actively control the video wall uh, or view a particular camera, um, as well as our investigation station, uh, to use, uh, which is uh, accessing um, the uh, archive video using the archive player. Uh, the key component here is the bank of monitors uh, or other display devices that are being controlled by several PCs running the live viewer in full screen video mode. This is our video wall up front here. Uh, we can use the Remote Live Viewer plugin from the Supervision and Wall Control Station uh, to change the contents of any tile in any layout on the video wall. On the video wall, we can arm a group of tiles to display active alarms, and we can also use camera sequences and guard tours to display many different views in one or more monitors. We can save the layout configuration on the video wall, so to load up with the same set of cameras and arm tiles as mentioned. Uh, and as well, it would be a good idea to set up the uh, live viewers running the video wall to start up when the uh, PC is booted and log on to our directory server automatically. Dynamic stream switching would be useful uh, to set up on the cameras so that the bandwidth and CPU usage is reduced, and we can have greater efficiency running the video wall. So now onto our frequently asked questions. Um, so our first question is uh, how many cameras uh, can we display on the system? So the, uh, the number of cameras on the system um, is uh, in, in total is more dependent on the hardware you're using and the ability to display the uh, video streams correctly. Uh, the maximum number of cameras we can have uh, in a layout is 16. On to question two. Um, are additional licenses required for any extra features? Uh, some of the features we covered uh, do require extra options on the license. Active Directory, for instance, is a licensable feature, as well as the Remote Live Viewer and Barco Wall Plugins, for example. We're at question three. Can I create new layout patterns? Uh, now, although custom layouts cannot be created from scratch, we have included 22 layouts that we can use in almost all situations. Uh, some of these are made uh, basically customized for vertical monitor alignment as well, so that's covered there as well. Now, question four. Um, do we need to have the directory and archiver servers in the control room? Uh, the answer to this is no. Um, since the entire system is on the network, we can have the servers in a secure location. We only need the client workstations in the control room environment. Our question five uh, asks if uh, we can use other kinds of interactive maps. Um, now Omnicast comes with the map editor straight out of the box and that allows the creation of basic maps. Uh, these can be layered as well um, but uh, they're using uh, basic uh, HTML. Um, more advanced maps can be created by our development team. Um, so our professional services team can assist with that uh, or uh, any uh, you, you can uh, access a third party developer as well. For question number six, using a CCTV keyboard, can we call up cameras on any live viewer in the system? Now this is possible, but only if the keyboard is connected to an encoder. Uh, a CCTV keyboard connected to the serial port of a PC can only call up cameras on that machine's live viewer. Sorry, I should uh, clarify an encoder or decoder. That's uh, as long as it's not connected to the uh, serial port of the PC. Okay, so that uh, wraps up the webinar for today. I'd like to thank you all very much for uh, attending. Um, our next webinar will be on Genetech licensing, and that's going to happen on June 3rd at uh, the same time, 12 p.m. EST. Um, now, we're going to keep the webinar open for about another 10 minutes in case there are uh, further questions. Uh, and if you do have any questions after, um, 
afterwards. Uh, we can just post them on the forum and uh, we'll get back to you with an answer. And as well, uh, just a reminder that uh, any questions that are asked today uh, will be uh, posted on the, uh, on the forum as well. Um, any feedback you have would be greatly appreciated. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can just post that in the forum as well, and, uh, and that would be great. Uh, so once again, thank you very much for attending on behalf of uh, myself and the Genetech Technical Assistance Center, and wish you all a very good day.